Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this December Daily album. Now if you've not heard of December Daily, it is it's something that's done more within the planner scrapbooking kind of community and it is basically a kind of mini album junk journal kind of thing that you do for the month of December. Now people do it in all kinds of forms, some people do it in pocket letter form, some people do it within their planners, some people make separate pieces like I've done here so I've made this kind of you know mini album style and um, it's basically a diary for the month of December because you know we have a lot going on. Now for me this year it's my parents 40th wedding anniversary and it's my mum's 60th birthday in December plus it's my sister's birthday in December. I have three friends who have birthdays in December and obviously lots goes on with Christmas and parties and things like that so the idea is is that you documentate that. Now some people religiously will sit down every day and actually fill it out as they would a normal diary. I'm not someone who has a diary, I have my planner but it's more for me for my work but what I would for me it will be that I'll probably catch up with it maybe every three four days. So what I'm going to do is back is when we get to December is I will do a little video of maybe four days worth of me then filling this out. Now some of you are probably thinking but so what do you do with it? So it is like I said that diary form so I've gone very over the top with this it's got that mini album look that I like I always love to use binder rings that's kind of my style. So I've got dangles here I will tell you where all this is from throughout the video and um, obviously December 2019 I've got a key for Father Christmas got this here, got this nice little, this is one of the cutouts from the paper pad um, from deck, from the desk of Santa Claus, little hat and then I've put these lovely corners on here, it's on chipboard I've got this pom pom trim, there will be a red added in which you'll see in the photos so and then basically you just kind of work your way through it so I can add more pockets if I want to once I start using it so this is a little tux uh, page that I will talk you through but basically these I made this whole page using my fuse tool but you can stick a photo on the back here and uh, it's just a nice way to yeah add some photos you can put more than one in here if you want I've got three in this album at the minute and then you've got your first day so I will probably add a little mat here and do some journaling depending on what happens on the 1st of December not much might happen so then I'll just put, didn't do much, <laughs> probably crafted. <laughs> um, it might be that I've got a Christmas party. So yeah, it's just, I think, a nice keepsake. I've done some embossing here on some of the pages. This is using, these are felt numbers again. I'll talk you through all this. And you just add lots to it. And if you imagine once you've got maybe receipts in here, you might put your Christmas shopping list in here, the day that you've done Christmas shopping, you might have a weekend away Christmas shopping, put it all in this. If it's in the month of December, you could do it earlier if you want. Yours might be November through to the middle of January or something. It's entirely up to you, but it's meant to be another nice way of a mini album. So it could be something that you do with family members. You might have family coming to stay for a long time. You might have grandchildren coming that maybe are a little bit older. This could be a really nice thing for them to do. I've got some note cards here, which I can write on. You can stick photos directly onto here. You could put your really long shopping list of stuff. You might have your food shop. I think you now probably get the point of what this is for. It's basically somewhere for you to just gather all of that information. So I've made these lovely little paper clips here for you to, you know, like I said, put the receipts maybe on there. And uh, you do it for the whole month. So there's 31 days within this December daily. And it's just worked brilliantly with the lovely papers that Kimmy gave me. Again, I'll show you those in a minute. I'll show you how to make one of these laminated pockets. I have done a separate tutorial on this, but this size is slightly different, so I thought I would show you that one there. So it's, um, it's not a very long video because it's once you've done one, you do as many as you want. Once you've cut one page, it's the same as the front and back covers. So that's why I'm talking a bit more now to just kind of explain the whole concept. And um, yeah, and I hope you like it. Like I said, if you don't want to do it as a December daily, it's a 31 page mini album and you can just fill it with photos. Use it for however you want. I've got that nice ribbon there, another little paper clip, and then we've got the Santa Claus paper clip there and another pocket. I like this one because I've got that whole cutout piece on the back. And yeah, it goes all the way through to the very end and that's where I can also add another little pocket if I need to. It's all on chipboard, it's very strong. I have ordered also some more gold for the back because I ran out. I've got three left so I thought, oh, I'll just wait until I've ordered them. 
but it's, it's gorgeous and I will display it all year round on my shelf and I just love it. So, like I said, the video is not too long, but let me show you how to make this very easy, but I think rather sweet and lovely gift as well for someone. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so as always, I've done a lot, but it's just the same thing, just repeated as many times as you want. So even the front cover is the same size as all the pages. So I'm going to do the back cover now, because I haven't done that yet. So my front cover there is all with the chipboard, and I'm starting to decorate it, but I've got a lot more that I want to do to it still. So for the front and back, you're going to need two pieces of chipboard that are four by eight. Now, like I said, my front and back are the same size as my pages. Now, usually you make your cover and your base slightly bigger. So if you don't like that everything is lined up just that's just so, so you can see there, there's the side, it's flush with the all the sides of the front cover, then make yours a bit bigger. So I would suggest if you don't like that style, then go for something that's maybe four and a quarter or four and a half by eight and a quarter by eight and a half. So just go that little bit bigger, it's entirely up to you. But I am sticking with all mine of the same. So two pieces of chipboard, four by eight. I just want to check that that's not, no, it's okay. And then my pattern paper to cover it. So this piece here measures five and a quarter by, I think it was nine and a quarter, yeah it is. Now I'm really enjoying using the Kalau book binding glue. And um, I'm finding that making the albums, I'm not needing to use any double-sided tape or anything. I'm just using this. It is so sticky and so secure and strong once dry. So I'm just going to now add this onto the back. As always, everything is always linked in the description box below. Okay, and then I'm going to stick that into the centre of my paper. Remember you're going to do this all twice, you'll be doing one for your front cover as well. So just get it as kind of central as you can, you don't, you know, don't matter if you're a little bit off. And just flip it over and just spread out that glue. Okay, and then we're going to fold in the corners as I do with all my mini albums. So I fold it right in like this and again you just want to try and get a square piece that sits over this. You see there, if you imagine there's the grey board behind, you've got a square. Just do that on all of the corners. Because I always put metal corner protectors on mine, which I've obviously done on the front cover. I am ordering more, so I'm waiting for some more to come in. So I've got the two on there, but I want another two there. So I want them on all four, and then on all four sides of this piece as well. So now we've folded in the corners. Just want to add glue, open them back up and add your glue, just in the corner, just kind of creep over, you know, each side, so you're just covering that area there, and then fold the whole thing in, stick down the sides, and as it starts to grab, just give it a few, you know, a few seconds, just let that grab, I'm going to do this one as well while I'm waiting. Okay, and then what you can do is just go in with your bone folder, and just, it's almost like it's a, a suction, you know, pack from like the, the freezer compartment or something with your fish. It's the easiest way to describe it. You want the card to look like it's sucked itself around the corner of that chipboard. And because that card, the glue's made the card just that little bit soft, it's quite easy to work. And can you see now, see what I mean? It looks like a suction pack. <laughs> but it's wrapped perfectly on that corner. So you just want to do that again on this one, because again, just let it grab the glue and then it'd be you know, easy to work. And I just think this gives you such a lovely finish on your projects. So again, if I bring that up, can you see how it's just perfectly wrapped around there? And then when you fold this piece over and add your corners, it looks really nice, but you don't have to add the corners either. It still looks nice. Because the amount of times I do still sometimes cut across, but I've still got it wrong. I've still, you know, cut it too far and then you end up seeing a piece of the, the grey board underneath. So I just, this way has never failed me. And um, you get really strong corners as well. Okay, so that's all my corners in. Then if you just fold each one using your table just to push against okay and then they start to go into that position and then you just want to add glue you can add the glue to this side or here I'm going to add it to the grey board side just because it's a little bit easier like so and then you can just kind of run 
a bead along the actual side there because obviously it's like a two three mil um, grey board so there is a, a side to it so then I'm just going to get the other end of my bone folder and again because this glue grabs very quickly it will soon stick to the side like so okay and then if you just bring it over with your finger and then just start spreading out that glue and the rest will all stick down There you go, and it dries completely clear, and then I'm just going to go around now and do that on all the other sides. Okay, and then I've got this piece here which is to cover this side, it can be obviously any pattern you want. This is three and three quarters by seven and three quarters, so it's just a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual chipboard piece, and that will sit perfectly over the top. So it just gives you a very, very strong front and back for your um, penny album. Okay, so whilst I'm just making sure this is stuck down, so you'll then want to cut as many pages really as you want, but you'll want enough to cover every day in December, but you may want, you know, more than one. It's one of those things that we can add to as we go through the month. So cut them the same size as this, which is four by eight. But again, if you've extended, well, actually you would have only just made this bigger if you have, so you'll still need four by eight or whatever size you want. You know, a lot of my videos are, are inspiration for you to then be able to go and, you know, change it up and, and do it however you want. So with one of your pieces of paper, you want to find the center point, which is gonna be four, and then you want the center point of that section, which would be two. Okay, so you're going to mark a pencil mark at two, four and six, all right? And then I would come in about a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch and punch a hole. So literally with your ruler, come down there, you can see about a quarter. In fact, that is a really wonky one. <laughs> I went through and used them to line up with each other, but your holes should be perfectly straight. <laughs> Mine for some reason are a little bit out, but it doesn't matter because it's on those binder rings, you know, they, they move about anyway, so I didn't even notice. So once you've done that, you then want to line that up front or your back and just sit it over the top and then draw over it with a pencil. And then I'm going to use my cropper dial to punch the holes out. Now what I am going to do is, that's the wrong pen, is this, these two here are better, this one's slightly higher, so I'm going to do little black mark there, there, and then I'm just going to bring that down there. They look much better. And then I'm just going to grab my cropper dial. I'm using the normal, the larger hole. So I'm just going to grab a bit out of there and then just line it up over the top and punch through. But you do have to kind of grab this piece out each time because otherwise you can't see through the hole because the... Um, the innards, the inside there is gets all stuck in this piece. So you can see there, so you just have to push it out or, um, you know, either way, just remove it. And then that last one there. Okay, so that's that piece all done. Next, I would like to always put my eyelets. So I use the gold ones that I've got in here. So I've got two kinds of gold. I'll drop one on the floor. Don't tread on them either. It's like treading on a piece of Lego. It is painful. So I've got one, two, three of this more dull gold. There's a real yellowy gold, but it doesn't go well. So I'm gonna use these ones here. And then again, make sure you get the right side. Pop them in. Okay, and then using this part now of my cropper dial, I'm just gonna pop it in and squash them all. Like so, and there we go. There is the base. So you want to do that again, the same on the front. And then in terms of my decoration, it's from the paper pad, which I showed you earlier. And it's just one of those cutouts. I am going to tick off on here nearer the time. I'll, I'll wait for that for the minute. Um, I've used this lovely skinny tinsel around that piece there. I've used one of these little Christmas hats, which are by Simply Creative, and I've used the pom-pom trim. Now I'm gonna add a red pom-pom trim to this, so I'll show you how I do that later. But now I'm gonna attach all of your pages, so you would put all your pages now and the back, so this is going to go on. And then I'm going to show you now how to do all the detail, all the bits and pieces inside. But already, 
Once I'm going to add dangles to this, I'm going to add all the numbers on the pages as well. But look how nice and chunky it's starting to become, and that's before we've even you know, started using it as a, as a diary for December. So I'm probably going to end up changing these stars because they're getting quite buckled. What I think I'm going to do, so I've got lots of these, is I'm going to laminate them and cut around them because then that tough plastic will be able to withhold you know, all the movement because I do really like them on there, and I think I'm going to add, have all three now as well. So first of all, I'm going to show you, let's do the laminated pocket so these are done exactly the same way as the other laminated pockets and that was a nice tutorial on its own so I'll link that up here so have a look at that one but because I changed the size of these I thought oh, I'll actually show it again so they just open up and then you've got your pocket there this is perfect as I said at the beginning for like um, your theatre tickets maybe a nice meal out just any kind of little receipts and things like that that you might collect through the again through the Christmas period so I'm going to pop that back in there for now. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to use, I didn't think about using these before, but these, the pocket is six by three and a half. You need two pieces of six by three and a half, but these are six, but I think I could, yeah, if I cut a little bit off of either side of that, I'll be able to get that Merry Christmas in there. And again, the same with this. So I'm going to cut those down. Okay, so in the background, I've just got my laminator heating up. I'll bring it into shot in a minute, but what you want to do now is decide you know which is going to be the front and back so I want the Merry Christmas actually on the back because I'm just going to trim that a little bit because when the the flap is over the top it would cover the Merry Christmas so you wouldn't actually I think it would just end up not looking very good so I'm actually going to have the ho 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 as the front and then this is going to be the flap to go over the top okay so that's the back and this is the front so you want to pop your front facing upwards with the back obviously backwards into your pouch now I am obviously attaching mine with the hole punches so you want to leave about a quarter well actually it was about half an inch yeah it was half an inch so I'm using my mat here and I'm going to pop this down inside the laminating pouch so there's half an inch left at the bottom so don't push it right to the bottom because you're actually going to end up hole punching this piece and then attaching it to your, your little um, file. Okay, so then that's that piece. Then with this one here, oh, I've got bits all over, I don't want to make sure there's no bits inside here which are wrong. This piece here, you want the inner side to face up and then pop it in and make sure it's all lined up but leave about a quarter of an inch one eighth of an inch, just in between one eighth and a quarter of an inch, leave a gap like so. Like so, this is exactly the same way I've done them before. If I bring that up now, you can see how that all looks. Okay, so my laminate is nice and warm. This is 150 microns, so I've set it to 150, although it does do well on 75, but because I'm making a pocket and it's gonna fold and things like that, I have um, increased the heat. So I'm just gonna run this through. Obviously, double check everything is nice and straight. Okay, so that's all gone through, so now I need to trim it down. So you want to trim above the, the flap here and the two sides. Don't trim this bottom part, because again, you're using that to attach it to your journal, mini album, diary, whatever we're going to call this. So just pop it in. You want to give yourself about one eighth of an inch. You don't want to cut, obviously, too close because you'll undo the seal, but you can see there, that's nice. And then I'll do this side here. There we go. And these pieces here are good to use for your um, shaker windows, maybe shaker windows, because you do get bubbles sometimes when the laminator just laminates on itself. But they're good for using for like your pop-up boxes, you know, when they're floating you need that kind of plastic. So yeah, keep them for that. Okay, so now we've done that. Next we need to very, very carefully cut inside one of the layers. So you want to open up that pocket. So I'm going to grab my very sharp knife here. And basically you want to go in, let me just start it off so you can see, and you're just going in between the card, okay, you just want to start it off, once you've got it, it will just slide perfectly down. Try not to go right off at the end because again you don't want to undo that seam, but now I have my pocket, okay, 
and that's done. Now you can run that through the laminator again if you want to, just to kind of seal all of this. It won't re reseal your pocket anymore, just put it in a feeder sheet just so it doesn't get caught up in your machine. Okay, and then if you very carefully, it's got static all on it, I've got bits of it, look at the back, look how nice that looks. So then you can just fold this over, kind of fold between the plastic, so you've got to, yeah, your joins kind of going through the plastic. Like so. And there you have it. You've got your little pocket. So then we want to add our snaps. So we're going to add our little kind of poppers. Okay, so this is all my snap supplies. I've had this a long time. And I've got the very, very sharp pokey tool there. So you just need to decide where you want your popper to go. So obviously I want mine to be in the centre. But you do have to remember that you can't go too far down because this needs to be able to go in. And it's about an inch. Okay, so I can see there that I'm okay to put it around that point there. So watch your fingers, but I'm going to go just there because that's about centre, like so. And then I'm going to use, I haven't really got a green that really matches, so I'll do red again. I'll do, should I do white? No, I think red will look nice again on the top. Yeah, I'm going to do red again. So with these, you need to, that one's a dud. Keep picking that one up. So you need two pins, okay? So that is a pin. All right. Looks just like a you know a ball, you know like a draw pin. You'll have one where it sticks out like that, and one where it's inset. Okay. So that will snap into that. Okay. When you see them in person, it does make sense. So you're going to have a pin for each one. So that's a pair, and then that's a pair. Now it doesn't matter which one you have on top and which one you have on bottom. So for this case, I'm going to have the the inset one. So the pin. So the pin is going to go inside and pop through there. You can see the pin. And then this piece is going to go on top, like so. And you should feel the pin coming through. Okay. So just sit it in there. You can push it down quite far. But now what these pliers do here is they squash that piece of plastic, that pin piece, and then it doesn't come out. So this dish is what sits the bottom pin piece in. And once you, you feel it in there, it sits in. You feel it, you can see it's like caught. And then everything will line up. And you basically just squash that down. And it is, it is easy to do. Okay, you don't have to put too much strain on it because it will only go, you know, as far as that. Take it out. And now, can you see that that pin is all squashed? Okay. Now we need to line that up with the top one here. So all I do is just push on that plastic and it will leave an indent on the inside. See, I can see now. Can you kind of see where it's gone a bit white? So there, I'm just going to poke through the centre, like so. Now this time, you're going to have your pin coming from the front because that's your decorative finish. Okay. And then this one will go over the top there. Again, push it so far so it stays in place. And again, the dish, you'll see now, sits perfectly over that. And then just squash it down. I use these all the time and I used to make like bags and dressmaking and things like that. So they're, um, it's nice to be able to use them in your card supply. So now, it pops. Okay. It's quite satisfying actually because it's really strong and because it's plastic it's not going to break it's not going to rip it's, it's nice and strong so that's the pocket so make as many as them as you want I may well do another one later on but two I think for the minute because I'm going to have like tuck spots and things like that as well I think I've got plenty of room okay so again I'm just going to grab the other pocket or anything really that you've got in here um, so I'll just grab another one of these although mine is slightly wonky <laughs> but just take one out. Oh, what am I doing? I've already got one. In fact, the pocket can go. No, the pocket won't go in there. Let's close that back up. I will have the pocket. Um, let's go nearer the back. Let's have it there. And I've already got this one here, which I forgot to add in. So you just want to sit that over the top because you can see through this. It's perfect. And just make sure you've got even overhang here. And then again, just use this black because it's quite handy. Use my back marker. But again, I know that that one is correct. 
that one's okay, I'll bring it down a little bit, but this one I'm going to just move my dot there. Okay. And again, punch out your holes. There we go. And then I can just add that one into here. Okay, so that's showing you that pocket. I'm now going to show you how to make this one. This is the last kind of piece I think that you need to see a tutorial for, I guess, just to get an idea. And this is my little photo kind of pockets. So I'm going to cut down little photos using my instant um, printer that I've got. And uh, that's the nice thing about having an instant printer is that you can get them done on that day and in there. I think sometimes we all have the intentions to get photos developed and we just don't, we always forget. And then before you know it, months have passed and you think, oh, I won't bother now. I'll do it on the next holiday or the next Christmas. But um, yeah, I love the little images here and these are from the kit, or I say kit, they're from the paper pad. So let me show you how to make this one. Okay, so these are all the cutouts and bits that I've been playing around with. You've also got that huge sticker sheet here, which is what I'm gonna use on a lot of my pages. I have been pulling bits out and um, again, you'll see that in more detail towards the end, but um, they're just really nice because again, everything matches perfectly. But on some of the 12 by 12 pages, you get all these pieces. So I went and cut out a load of them. Now, how have I got that pocket there? So I've got a snowman and Father Christmas. So this one, let's do something a bit different. I think for this one, I'm gonna have the mittens keep warm because I know that I will be going out and probably doing late night shopping and maybe having some, well, I will be, there's no maybe, some um, mulled cider and mulled wine. And I think this could be a nice little one to capture that. So I'm gonna have all the, the warm things. So you've got your Christmas stockings there, keep warm and the mittens. So that's gonna be the, the little setup I'm gonna have there. I'm just gonna trim that one down a little bit. Okay, so there's that one down. Now I'm using just one of my older pockets because the newer ones I've got have the little um, semicircle thumb kind of bit here. So you can pull out, you know, whatever's in your pocket. I use these to store my stamps. So I've got a spare one here, but um, any kind of soft plastics. We are memory keepers do have their own for the fuse tool. So um, it's entirely up to you what you do. And you might have another way of doing it. So you don't have to do it this way, but basically take this one out. So this measures three and a half by seven and a half. Okay. Now looking at this, I think I would have preferred to have done something decorative there. So I think I'm going to change that for this one here. But all of these pieces, okay, to fit what I'm doing, you'll need them to be two and three eighths of an inch squared because my squares here are going to be slight, just a little bit larger than that so that they can slide in and out. So all of these are little pockets on the side, okay, so nothing's going to fall out. They are quite nicely in, you know, they're they're tight enough that they're not going to fall out, but easy to slide out when you want to. So um, I think I'm going to change this though. So three and a half. Now you can keep the bottom already that is sealed. You can keep it like that. Now I did cut mine off because I wanted this to look the same as this, because obviously that's got the perforation and then the top bit won't. So I am going to just remove the bottom as well. Okay. And then I'm going to have, so three and a half. By seven and a half. So I'm just going to have to, can't be bothered to get my other one out. So let's do five and a half. Okay. So I've just cut that down to three and a half by seven and a half, but I've left for the join here. Okay. That's the original join on that one. This is the original join here. What the fuse tool is now going to allow me to do is make these sections here and also seal the bottom. Now, I did go a little bit bigger because we need to seal the ends. So at the minute, mine is probably more about, yes, yeah, seven and three quarters. It doesn't matter now if it is bang on that size or not. You'll see what I mean when I do this. So you wanna make sure your fuse, call, fuse tool gets nice and hot. And then I'm using the ruler here. Although I have been using this metal ruler, my Tim Holtz one's got a metal edge on it as well. So it's entirely up to you. Make sure you got a protective surface. Cause last time I used this, I went right through this, but fortunately you can't notice it. No, I'm not going to use the end there because I can't see it now. I'm going to just use this side of the ruler. You don't have to go through the middle there. I'm going to use the outer side. And then I'm just going to go over it slow-ish. And it will just 
cut that away. If it doesn't come away first time, then it's still warming up, but you can go over it again. There we go. So now if I open this up, that's all sealed. Okay, so I'm going to do the same on this end here. Okay, and there's that end now all sealed. So I'm going to get a piece of decorative paper. So this needs to be seven and three eighths of an inch by seven eighths of an inch. So I'm not going to use that one because it annoys me actually that you can't go too, it's hard to go lower than an inch on that one, whereas this one the inch starts in, so I'm going to have to come in there. Okay, so now you want to pop this inside. It should fit just right. Push it right into the edge. Perfect. So now you want to turn this off, let it cool down, or what I do is very carefully unscrew the very hot end, like so. I pop it on my silicon mat where my glue gun is so it's not going to damage anything and then it is, you'll feel a little bit of warmth but it won't burn you and then you can just put in that one but they recommend that you turn it off, cool down and then replace but I'm impatient so now I'm just going to give that about, I don't know, five minutes to get nice and hot and we're basically going to run it right down here to seal that piece in and then we're going to pop in each of these and each time we're going to seal below with this perforation detail which you'll see that gives you a different look and it will give us that but we're going to keep all this open okay so because the fuse tool is only six and a half inches length maybe a little bit more either side I'm going to use my other metal ruler and just turn it over make sure you push that in as far as you can go like so and then you just want to give yourself a gap wide enough to get this in and roll it along Okay, and there you go, that's sealed now, that's not going to come out. And this is what people use to make pocket letters. So it's, um, you know, there's lots and lots of uses for this. So now I want to have the keep warm in the middle, and then I'm going to have, so start with this one. No, I'm going to have this one at the bottom, so that will go in. And you want to get it right in as far as you can. And you'll see there, it's just got a nice amount just to overhang. And then this one, I'm going to pop. Actually, I like to do it so I can see the gap. So let's go that way. And you're just going to go from the outside. And just join it there. And then just test it. And you see there, you've got a lovely little pocket. And then I'm going to pop the keep wall. And just check. Yep, everything fits in perfectly. So again, that one I'm going to do this way. I'd like to be able to see the gap. There's that one. And then the last one you don't need to do anything with because it's all sealed. You just need to slide it in. Now mine's a little bit tight, which is fine. I just I think I need to take a little bit off the top there because I can actually see a little bit of white. So it might be just a little bit bigger than the... What did I say these were? That's not the size that they are, is it? Two, yeah, two and three eighths squared. Now it is. So let's pop that one in. Oh yeah, perfect. And there you have it. Isn't that cute? And once you've got photos all down here, I think it's gonna look really, really lovely. And then you wanna do your hole punching again. I'm just gonna use this piece here. And again, just roughly keep them lined up. They're all really wonky, that one is, but you don't notice it when it's on those ring binders. So again, it just shows, don't worry if you are slightly out like me, because it will all uh, sort itself out. So now I'm going to do one there. I did use the yellowy gold ones on that one, so I guess I need to keep it. But you don't have to, but I'll do it the same. So I've got these. One, two, three. There we go, that one is much better than that one. So I think, me being fussy, I will probably end up redoing that. Or, what I might do is remove these, put some washi tape over, and then redo the holes, because it's the holes and that being plain that I'm not liking, whereas that one I really like. So, we can add these in. So that one was in here for the minute. 
Okay, so it's now another day, so I'm revisiting this because I put it to one side, had other things to do, and now I'm going to go back and do all of the inside, the detail, the numbers, the dangles and all kinds of things. So I just thought I'd show you what I've got, and then I'm going to film me doing the pages, but I will put it on high speed because you don't need to watch me do every single piece. It's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. One thing I do want to point out is I wanted some Christmas dangles, and... I think some companies, they overprice things when it's Christmas time. So I went into my local pound shop. So I guess for those of you outside the UK, you've got the Dollar Tree. I know there's a brand of Euro shop, um, but I can't think what it's called. But you want to try and go to those kind of places and see if you can find the wine glass chums. I'm sure places will be doing these. And I looked at them and I thought they are really cute little images. They are a, a really strong plastic. And if you're unfamiliar with what these are, they go on the bottom of your wine glasses. And um, it's to just basically <laughs> for that person to know which is their wine glass so they don't get them mixed up. So you would have a Christmas tree and someone else would have a wreath or something. But if you take all that off, not only have you got some nice beads, but they all come off, but you have these wonderful dangles. Now you could put uh, an earring piece on the top there and have them as earrings but they're going to be perfect for this mini album so I got two packs because I thought I'm going to do my Christmas mini album for my Christmas photos this year so I will use some of these on there but I thought I'm going to use probably nearly all of these I think on this one because I might put them in maybe in some of the pages as well so I will keep the actual rings because they are handy for you know handbags and doing you know little bits and pieces on that I probably won't use these because it's more of a copper and then obviously a blue so that's not really the colours I'm using but I'm going to take all them off and you will see them feature then I've also got these old keys I do collect things like this I've got a like a little jar full of them and these are authentic very old keys and um, I thought they'd look nice it's almost like you know the key for Santa so I thought it's got a nice little um Christmas feel to it so I'm not sure which size I may just put it straight onto the binder ring itself or I might put some ribbon and stuff around that so that's those then I've got my alphabet numbers these are the felt ones by Simply Creative they are self-adhesive I'll probably put some extra glue on them as well but they are going to be glued to each page but because they're quite thin they're not going to add too much bulk to the pages I also decorated these cabochons and these this is perfect these stickers that are on this sheet here so there was one there there was one there and then there's the black one when you peel it off that fits perfectly into the cabochon now those ones were ones that I brought from the works so I did buy them a while ago and these are the last two that I've got left so um, I'm going to look on the works online and see if they've got some more because now I've started to use them more I'm really enjoying them and they're definitely something that I want to put on more of my mini albums but two of those are going to be hanging down then I've got these which are just paper clips from Sainsbury's but they're jumbo ones and I'm just going to make a few little decorative paper clips just to kind of poke out the top so just to show you what I mean so here is one of the stickers that I stuck on some gold cards it's got a little frame there I will pop that on the back put some piece of card or something there and then you have a really nice little paper clip you can put photos in there you know I might have actually I might do that and have a photo mat or something maybe the pocket here and have that there and it could hold the receipts for example through December or something so that's I'm going to do a few of those um I've got washi tape because I'm going to use the washi tape down the sides of the red pieces along with I'm going to emboss parts of them as well and I'm going to do some lines so I've got actual somewhere you know to write um, I've got other things here I've got obviously lots of these bits left over still I've got this sticker sheet here which I haven't used I brought this last year um, so I brought it out with all my Christmas stuff but I used some of them on the pages that's what I used for the front again that was a while ago now in Hobbycraft but it's a thick as one and I think that's probably about it oh and I've got this beautiful thick ribbon which I picked up from Dunelm Mill for £2 for three metres. I thought that was actually really good considering how thick this is. I think it's about two and a half inches. Oh, two. Okay. I wasn't too far off. But I'm going to do a really nice big bow probably at the top there. So that is what I'm going to be doing. That's what you're going to see. But I'm now going to put this all on high speed just so you can get an idea. And then I'll show you it in more detail and you can see how it all comes together.
Okay, so I've done everything that I can do until I start using it. So from the 1st of December, I then plan to, you know, start writing in it and I will add little photos and obviously receipts and all that kind of stuff that I've mentioned throughout the video. And then with that, I will incorporate in some of the stickers because I want to get them all used within this album. I've got plenty of pages, so that will get used. And then I also have these pieces here as well. So these will get popped in and I can obviously, I could mat a white square on there and do a little bit of journaling, whatever I want. So that's everything left over now from that paper pad. Just all these little offcuts. There's some plain red card which will go into my scraps because that's perfect sizes there. But all of this you'll see is just all the scraps from this. So once I finish that, I hope really I won't have hardly anything left. There you have it. So I've rabbled on enough. Hopefully it um yeah it's inspired you to do something that you know maybe you've never done this before because uh yeah, and I don't think everybody knows about the December Daily or just that kind of planning, scrapbooking, junk book kind of thing. So, yeah, I hope you like it. I've loved making this. It's taken me, it hasn't taken me ages, but I have done it across two days because I've, you know, have other things that I needed to do as well. So, but yeah, that is it from me. So, hope you've liked it. Please give me a thumbs up if you have. Check all the links below because I will link as much as I can, including this paper pack because I know it is obviously a bit older. But all the accessories and stuff you should be able to get a lot of. And uh, yeah, I will be back again soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.